Gospel of June the 18th, 2016, a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, No one can serve two masters. He will either hate one and love the other, or be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds in the, in the sky. They do not sow or reap. They gather nothing into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are not you more important than they? Can any of you by worrying add a single moment to your lifespan? Why are you anxious about clothes? Learn from the way the wild flowers grow. They do not work or spin. But I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was clothed like one of them. If God so clothes the grass of the field which grows today and is thrown into the oven tomorrow, will he not much more provide for you, O you of little faith? So do not worry and say, What are we to eat? Or what are we to drink? Or what are we to wear? All these things the pagans seek. Your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you besides. Do not worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will take care of itself. Sufficient for a day is its own evil. Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today the Lord is reminding us very, ever very sweetly and, and softly, that we cannot serve the money, Mammon, the God of, of money, and Him, the true God. Why do we become some idolatric persons? Because certainly we know that we need food, we need to eat, we need just to be sustained, we need to drink, we need to be clothed. Nowadays, of course, we need to be paying for our housing, paying for our transportation means whether that is the truck that you take on the corner of the street or your car that you take along with you and the, and the phone bills and the water bills and, and everything else. We need money. But many times because we perceive that we need that money and we, that we have to work for that we might tend to become slaves of the money. And then, if our greatest goal, if our greatest treasure is money, we might end up not serving God. For example, if my treasure is in money, and there comes a point where I can make a whole bunch of money, but I, let's say I have to prostitute myself, I won't care doing it. I just want to say, I'm going to say, well, I don't mind. It's, there's a bunch of money on it. I don't care. I, I want the money. If there is a chance when I can make a lot of money, but I need to steal, and I have the chance, and that is my greatest treasure, then I will do it. I will steal. And even though I know that I shouldn't do that because God is asking me not to, I would think to myself, well, it doesn't matter. I, I still now have the money in my pocket or in my bank, and afterwards I will deal with God. So that is what the Lord is telling us. You cannot serve both mammon and God. You have to love one or the other. Otherwise, you're just playing the fool. You are actually loving the money, and you're just saying but despising. You're saying that you love God, but you despise Him. You don't obey Him. To love God is to obey the Lord, not otherwise. And the Lord goes on to say, what you think about your drinking, your food, does not come from the money that you earned. It comes from God. And you can say, well, no, no, you're mistaken. I work hard and I made money. Well, okay, who gave you the work in the first place? You think that you deserved it? who gave you life, who gave you health in order to perform that work, who gave you a good and responsible um, hirer, the one that was paying from you, for you, 
Who hired you? Who who did it? You might have ended up being hired by someone that was, was a weasel that made you work and just went away with your money. But all those little details, the life that you enjoy right now, that you might enjoy what you worked, is also from God. And that is what the Lord is reminding us. Do not worry about your life. Because God is providing it for you. Do not worry about food or clothing. Because your Heavenly Father will provide it to you. Think that you are more important than the birds of the sky or the or the flowers of the wild. And then the Lord says, seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. If we do that, and I'm not saying that we should be lazy or remiss and don't do what we have to do. Yeah, we have to work. But first we have to serve God and then we will be blessed. And we will be blessed whether we are very prosperous or whether we are having are, are going bankrupt. For if we trust God and seek His kingdom, whatever happens to us will be the absolute best, because then we will be absolutely in the hands of God. And there is no place better than that. Absolutely. Do not worry about tomorrow. The Lord says tomorrow will take care of itself. It's not ours. It's still not ours, because ours, ours is only now. Now when we can act. Ours is not what happened yesterday or even 20 seconds ago. It's past our time. The present is the only one when we can act. That is our time. Tomorrow, as the Lord says, will take care of itself. It is enough for each day with its own evil. So what we should do and prepare ourselves for it <coughs> is to work hard every day. It would be great if we could wake up in the morning louding God and asking Him, What do you want me to do today, Lord? That would be a great disposition. If we read the Gospel, if we pray, if we allow ourselves to be docile to the motions of the Holy Spirit, then we might end up doing what He wants, seeking for His kingdom and righteousness. And we must certainly be blessed by His love. Not that <coughs> if we are not righteous, we might not have His love. We have it all. Righteous and unrighteous people. Except that when you try to be docile and obedient out of love, then you are enjoying that love of God. Then we will see the hand of God in our lives. Let us pray humbly that, that God our Father might enable us to do that. And let us also pray for every one of our brothers throughout the world, especially those that are in grave sin. Until we meet in heaven, God bless you all, brothers.